Guys, I'm really happy to welcome to the podcast Representative Misha Maynard. She's a, a member of the Georgia House of Representatives for the 56th District. She's a mom of two daughters, a physical therapist. She's currently working on her doctorate in business administration from North Central University. Her website, Misha, M-E-S-H-A, Maynor, M-A-I-N-O-R.com. You can also follow her on Twitter, at Misha Maynor. Misha, welcome to the podcast. Um, you created a quite a stir uh, recently when you announced that you were quitting the Democratic Party and joining the Republican Party. Now, I'm really interested in whenever someone has a kind of conversion story, whether it's a, you know, a communist who becomes an anti-communist or whether it is a somebody who's an atheist who becomes a Christian. And these journeys are interesting because uh, I like to know what causes someone to, to shift in a, in a pretty important or fundamental way. So can you talk a little bit about what, about how, as a, someone who had been in the Democratic Party, I assume that you're from, kind of in, lived in a Democratic milieu, maybe you're from a Democratic family. What caused you to sort of make this decision? Thank you for having me. Um, you know what, really, it was a decision about policy and not necessarily party. There are some fundamental issues that the Democrats are completely against. Um, that do not benefit my community. The main ones being school choice. Um, in some of the schools in my district, 2% are meeting math proficiency, 3% are meeting reading proficiency. And so to have a, a standard that, you know, we do not um, approve of children having choices, I'm fundamentally against that. The other one was defunding the police crime. I represent the heart of downtown Atlanta. So crime is rampant. It doesn't matter what socioeconomic community you are in. Um, my constituents said they do not want to defund the police. And the third one really is putting people over systems. Um, the best example for that is a prosecutorial oversight bill that we passed this past year. Um, this bill really puts people over the system. And so it's some fundamental policy issues rather than, you know, I want to be a Republican. <laughs> right, right. Let's let's look at those policy issues. Let's start with the issue of school choice. Now, for a long time, the position of the Democrats was something like this. Uh, school choice is an attack on the public school system. Public school systems are underfunded. If you provide more funding, the public schools will fix themselves. That's the solution to get more people into the public schools. But it seems like you've reached a point where you're like, you know what, we've sort of tried that it's not working is is your view that this that the public school systems are irreparably irreparably broken and that therefore parents need to be given alternatives i think the school system is broken um, that does not mean that the teachers are broken the teachers are beholden to a broken system the teachers aren't allowed to have the freedom um, to teach the way they were taught in school and you know, the school system in America was built on a bell system. That bell system is based on manufacturing <laughs> during the first industrial revolution. We're past a robotic um, economy, if you will. We're in artificial intelligence. It's chat GPT. You can go into Whole Foods, put your hand um, on a platform and you can check out with just your hand, which means that jobs for people that can't read and can't perform simple math are going to be eliminated. There was a study by Goldman Sachs that said 300 million people are going to lose their job to artificial intelligence in 10 years. So the system is broken. It can be fixed if local school boards um, decide they want to be more creative. Somebody, uh, I remember uh, hearing a striking observation recently. Someone said that if you go into a hospital today, it would be unrecognizably different from a hospital, say, a hundred years ago. There would be exactly. all this new technology. There, they'd be using lasers, new ways of doing surgery, and so on. But if you go into a classroom, it's not all that different from what it was a hundred years ago. So it does appear that the school system, and by the way, this would also apply to some degree to private schools, it, that there hasn't been the kind of adaptation to the world we live in today. 
So you're, it seems to me what you're saying is we need to try new things and we need to put the power in the hands of parents who will have some options for their children. But when you came out and took this position, I mean, presumably the Democrats could have said, well, Misha, that's your view. It's not our party's view, but you're welcome to have that view. But that really wasn't their <laughs> position, was it? It was not their position. In fact, that one vote um, had my colleagues start putting up thousand dollar checks on the Internet for someone to run against me because they were just that opposed to school choice. I represent um, a district in Georgia that has the highest number of charter schools in the entire state of Georgia. My constituents want choice. I voted the way my constituents want it. The Democrat Party was completely against not just me, but the 60,000 people that I represent. Very interesting. Let's turn to defund the police. Uh, I mean, that is such an extreme idea. And yet it's almost came out of nowhere and suddenly became orthodoxy. Do you think that the origin of the idea was just a kind of absurd overreaction to the George Floyd situation? How do we go? Uh, I mean, there was there's talk of police reform for a while, but suddenly this idea of like taking the resources away from the cops. Were you shocked when that suddenly came center stage? You know, the part of the problem, um, in my opinion, with politics in general is we let the media take wind of um, some talking points. And as politicians, people want to just go with it because that puts them in the spotlight. I was actually campaigning during this defund the police and George Floyd um, activity and may he rest in peace. But I campaigned on no, we do not need to defund the police. I was never for defunding the police. Um, I'm the victim of stalking. And so I'm intimately um, aware of the need for law enforcement. My suggestion after being elected in um, a committee hearing was we need to increase <clears throat> funding for social services and mental health. We do not need to take away public safety dollars. Um, so that was my stance from the very beginning. And interesting enough, Democrats today are saying, we never said that. We never said we wanted to defund the police, but the records show otherwise. Let's take a pause when we come back more with Representative Misha Maynard, Georgia House of Representatives for the 56th District, and now a Republican. Have you heard about the Durban Accords? They're the greatest threat to the U.S. dollar's global dominance in the past 80 years. Now, on August 22nd, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa are expected to announce the launch of a new international super currency fully backed by gold or other commodities. Now, this is part of a long-term plan to supplant the U.S. and the dollar as cornerstones of the global financial system. How can you protect your IRA or 401k from the fallout from from this landmark announcement. Well, you can diversify with gold from Birch Gold Group. Historically, gold has been a safe haven in times of high uncertainty, which is certainly right now. Get a free information kit on gold IRAs. Decide for yourself if a tax-sheltered retirement account backed by physical precious metals is right for you. Text the word Dinesh to 989898. There's a monumental shift happening among nations that control one-third of the world's GDP starting August 22nd. So protect your retirement savings, text Dinesh to the number 989898. Claim your free information kit on gold from Birch Gold.